对对 ，OK， 呃、uh, ，Welcome， <laughs> my name is A Cai， 呃、uh, ，my name is Chinese name is 周国兴，呃、uh, ，English name is Nancy， but in Taiwan everyone call me A Cai， 呃、uh, ，I'm work， I'm， I work。I work for ATRI. ATRI is a、uh, non-profit organization in Xinzhou City. And、uh, today I'm going to share our one-year project called A Daddy.、Uh, it's a, a col collaborative project for agricultural image database. So you can see the brief.、Uh, brief is A D. And now it's open up. So if you have interest in to becoming our members, you can、uh, contact with me.、Uh, I will, I will do brief introduction for myself. Okay,、uh, I am the principal investigator in A3 Agricultural Technology Research Institute. Our institute is located at Xinzhou City, with a beautiful seashore. You can see Xiangshan Si Di, very beautiful, Xibin Gong, Xibin Feng Jing Chu. I'm graduate from、uh, National Taiwan University, so I put、uh, my photo here, with、uh, you can see beautiful rice field. And、uh, after I graduate from agronomy. Oh, I work for A3 as a, a data analyst since two、uh, since 2018. My project is focused on text mining, image recognition, and digital transformation for agriculture.、Uh, but now,、uh, I think people in Taiwan we are getting、uh, familiar with the、uh, Jingling Jiantan, net zero emission management. And I so I have new role or、uh, ESG report consultant. I help the my client to count the greenhouse gas emission and try and to help them to write the ESG report, 呃，永续报告书 environmental environment so 呃、uh, society and 呃、uh, government 哎、欸、government 对就是 E 就是环境 S 是社会 G 是治理。In、ESG report consultant, and before 2022, I am the product manager of A Daddy, which is the today's I'm going to share the story. And、uh, at the beginning, I、uh, when I came to A Tree, I、uh, I organized a text mining project. We use the text mining technique to collect the.、Uh, The literature, agricultural research literature from the website, and we use text mining to a web crawling,、uh, web crawling technique to collect those wording data, and then we do the statistic analysis and try to、uh, count the which is the、uh, most frequently a topic, and w、uh, what is the hot topics in the. In the agricultural research area, okay, and、uh, so since since two thousand twenty, I I share my, our project for this、uh, for the text mining、uh, project and we、uh, in the Coast Cup conference. So that's why we organize the Kufa community、uh, com community of open data for agriculture Kufa. And this is the first year of conference in uh, with uh, with the Coast Cup、uh, Coast Cup yeah conference, and then uh, with uh, started to 2020, and now is is the fourth years fourth years com conference.、Mm. And the first first year we organized this conference with. The Chapa company called Elite Elite Energy, and now we have more members such as、uh, Gaoshong City, Agricultural Bureau. This is hard to read. It's a governmental organization, and we also have、uh, the mem、uh, our member also include some、uh, non-profit project Agri Wei Qi Hou. And also the company from IT industry, data 有悠游数据，悠游科技。And、uh, from so I would quickly、uh, 
introduce the topic in each year of in our Kufa community. And so the first year we focus on the possibility of open data in agriculture, which means we want to let more people to know open data can help us to improve the agricultural management and make farmer uh, get more, uh, make eh, earn more money. <laughs> and the second year, two thousand twenty-one, the topic is focused on the data, data and place making, Fang Chuangshen. It's it's a big issue because in the con con in the countryside, more and more young people. Uh, Leave the leave their hometown to the city. So we will see the countryside. The farmer will uh, in Taiwan. The farmer is very old. Usually, it's very old. Over, usually, an age in age of farmer is over fifty or sixty years old. And so, in 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 2021, we have uh, this conference to discuss how can we. Uh, how can we let young people stay in the farmer uh, in the countryside uh, by the data open data and the in 2022 last year we we focus on the intelligent agriculture and the business model so last year we uh, we invited not only governmental organization but also uh, uh, IT company, and and we invited them to share their experience and share their business model. And to this year's, because of the governmental policy, Jingling, uh, so we focus on the net zero, uh, digital transformation, and net zero promo promotion. Yeah, we try to use the. Uh, try to use digital technology to help the farmer to count the greenhouse gas emission and try to help them to lower down their greenhouse gas emissions. And this uh, this conference will held tomorrow, 明天, <laughs> uh, 5, 5, and uh, today, uh, this year we focus on the net zero emission and the digital transformation. Uh, because we s we found out that when we talk about the uh, this net zero emission issue, there are a lot of data we have to uh, maintain and we have to collect. Well, uh, for example, we have to collect the uh, record of when farmer do spread the fertilizer or when farmer spread the pesticide. They have to re record, make it record, and make it to become a doc document. Okay, so and not. After they uh, collect those documents, we have to count or do the uh, statistic analysis and try to count out uh, how many greenhouse gas they produce during the farm system. And this is really important when they have the digital tools. And because if the farmers have digital tools, they can uh, they can evaluate the greenhouse gas emission uh, emission rate more efficiently so that's the that's today uh, this year's topic and now I want to uh, focus on the our main purpose to today uh, the intelligent agriculture in Taiwan and what in the I will talk about the situation now in Taiwan and then to to uh, to say why, to claim why we want to start up this project. Uh, since the government C, uh, COA, Nong Ye Wei Yong Hui, Council of Agriculture, uh, start up to promoting intelligent agriculture maybe 10 years ago. And now we will see uh, the, the people in the city, such as you guys, may think about oh, intelligent agriculture, oh, you must have robot, it must have uh, so fancy equipment. Yes, that's the news, some digital news they will tell you. But now in Taiwan, we still have a lot of, we still need a lot of lab labor work, uh, so especially in southern part of Taiwan and in the fruit industry and the vegetable industry. Okay, so that's the distance, the gap between the truth and the ideal image. Uh, 
uh, somehow we st we are now really have some we call lending technology. Oh, uh, uh, when we say the lending technologies means you can see really see the application in the farm. Okay, now the future farming image. Okay, so such as the UAV UAV vehicle drone. I forgot the UAV and uh, uh, some automatic machine, uh, farming machine. Yes, so yes, we do have intelligent agriculture, but most most of them are uh, most of them are equipment, uh, not the decision making perspective. And uh, so that, that that's the the problem we faced. Like in Taiwan, digital agriculture usually you can see is the sensing all kinds of sensing equipment or auto automobile machinery, but. Uh, and yeah, mean, meanwhile, this device can help us to get a lot of data, like the temperature, or like the rain field, or like the uh, the GPS record. But what is the next? Because we al already get so much, so many, uh, so amount of data, image data, num numeric data, or the the text data. But how how can we? Uh, apply this data to more meaningful, uh, meaningful tools or meaningful results. Okay, so in Taiwan, we when we uh, when we discuss the in intelligent agriculture, we focus on the four perspective. The one first is the farming system, or the, we call the environment, and the second is the sensing part, or such as the all kinds of sensor, remoting system, and the Third part is networking, like for uh, 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, any <laughs> and you can see the cost and the speed and the is the the cost of network is getting really really down. 就是我们那个现在通讯的成本是越来越低了。哦 ，so uh, now we are facing about uh once the cost of network is really low. Which means we can uh, get more data from the farm and the farming system. So how do we use those big data? And now, yeah, that that that, that is true because in we when we uh, discuss with the farmer, they say, "Oh, I got a lot of data. Ten years data, six twenty years of data, hundreds thousands of images, all kinds of image, but." How can we deal with those big data? Okay, so uh, the our project A Daddy is focused on uh, we can make if if we have a tools to let farmer easily to do the uh, clean up a uh, fir the first first step of data analysis, which means the clean, clean cleaning the data cleaning, and we if we can. If they, if the farmer can use those tools to make their da their data to become standardized data, or oh, that that is that may can help us to uh, apply those big data and try really can help the farmer to improve their management. So uh, in Atri, we form a bio I ICT research team. Our team involved in the uh, swine pig, just zoo lah. 猪疾病 pig disease and cow disease, 猪牛专门炸乳的 diary cow, and also the tomato disease. And I, my, I played a role in, uh, in project manager or product manager, or whatever. <laughs> It's a a very complicated and very exhausted <laughs> work. Okay, so and the and the lead of the, this project is Dr. Chen, 呃我们动物所的所长 Okay, so. We want to develop an agri AI solution tech because now we get uh, we have a lot of data, but those data need to be cleaned up and need to be standardized, and so that the AI uh, model team can build use the data to train the AI model. Okay, so this is the the. Uh, our A Daddy platform called Aliens Database for Agricultural Disease Image. So we call it A Daddy, and you can see it's an Alien Database, which means 
uh, you have to send us an uh, application to become our aliens and you are a member. You can be a one of our members. And uh, so you can send me a, a document to apply a uh, count, okay. And then you can upload. The, our platform has, there are three, three, three major functions of ADADI. The first, first part is uh, data uploading. And if anyone can upload the data, with the correct ta tagging, so you can see uh, this tagging. You can uh, you can customize the format of this tagging, and the data will uh, you can upload with no limitation, like 4K H, uh, high resolution image, and as long as you ta uh, you make the right tagging with domain knowledge. Okay, and you can see. Uh, after you uh, after after uploading the data, you can make the tagging such as the species of the plants or species of the animals or any kinds of uh, uh, any kind of animals. <laughs> okay, and in our project, because I uh, just I just like I said, this is a one year old, uh, one year project. Okay, so I will show, show one of our uh, aliens, for example. This is the tomato, uh, tomato part. And you can see the, you, the, you can upload the data and then make the tagging with leaves, pian, and also the date and also the uh, the disease of NEN, if you know, and if you don't, if you not are not sure which disease, you can just choose unknown. Okay, and this, the, uh, there are another description of these uh, these photos, such as the shape of the disease or the symptom of the disease. Okay, mm. and we also use RWD. Uh, RWD format, which may we want to in just in case the ext extension and the flexibility of our platform. So in the future, we hope we can everyone can use can upload the data and make the tagging on on the by their mobile device. And the other part, the second part, we focus we try to. I think it's the most important part is the collaboration part, because after you upload the data, we have we have the expert. The expert will uh, the the expert will revise the the the, the taking with the right taking. So if someone do the wrong take, the expert will revise make the re revisement. So in this process. The expert uh, somehow they join the data cleaning process and make the data more uh, more powerful by adding their not domain knowledge. So I this the uh, that is also my favorite part because uh, now all the database in agriculture f just uh, just provide the upload and storage function, but. In ADADI, we have the uh, expert role to revise the uh, revise the revise the tagging with the correct knowledge. Okay. And all the data will storage in NRI Labs. Uh, it, it is National Center of High High Performance Computing, Guowang Zhongxin, in Zunan, located at Zunan. It's also a non-profit non-profit organization. Okay. And all the data you can uh, see at the, this page at the, my gallery, just like the, the, just like the Flickr or your Facebook account, you have the photo gallery. And the data will, fo will st storage by SQL language. And in all the members in our alien can download others' photos. Uh, okay, as if you want to download the photos from another members, you have to, uh, you have first you have to 
you you have to make sure you have the scores. And one, so the easy, the easily way you can get the scores is you upload data, 一张换一张 When you upload data, you can download the data from another. Okay, but also if you have money, you can buy the data、uh, through through the platform. So, and that's the business strategy for us.、Uh, in the ADD platform, we have three character. One is、uh, the member, which which usually is the farm farm, which usually is the farmer. They can the farmers can upload the data and share the data. And the second role is expert, which they can donate their domain knowledge and try to、uh, revise the、uh, revise the photo with the correct、uh, correct take taking. And the second、uh, and the third role is、uh, someone need the correct data and correct taking and the high quality、uh, agricultural data. Okay, so we hope that. Uh, the the collaboration、uh, the collaboration part process and this sh、uh, sharing this sharing machine sharing machinery can be、uh, more sufficient and and through and by those three kinds of rules we can make、uh, we can gather up and form a lead or、uh, form an alliance so that's why we call the pla platform alliance database. And、uh, the leader of the aliens, they have the authority to decide the insertion information of the, the of the column for the photos. And the leader of aliens, they he or she should organize the aliens and find a、uh, find out、uh, find at least six members. Okay. And. And also the 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 leader, we 讲盟主 the leader of the aliens, they can decide it,、uh, which photo should be sent to which expert. Okay, so that's the example. You can see we already have、uh, pig disease aliens. We have the dairy cow and tomatoes for plants. So you can see the this is the、uh, this is the. 指派你们讲忘记了<笑> ，assign OK. This is the assign page、uh, of A Daddy, and the and the leader of aliens they can just choose which photos and to assign the to the proper、uh, suitable expert to revise the tagging. OK, and if you want to join us. Uh, you can contact with me because I am the contact person. <laughs> okay, so now we still use、uh, we. It's open, but you still have to send us application form for document and let us know what is your purpose and which. In the future, we will use those data for any、uh, for what kind of、uh, situations. And、uh, in oh, we also. Considering the copyright, we also、uh, make the CC CC 授权 clarity CC clarification. <laughs> you can choose.、Uh, you can you can choose、uh, any kinds of、uh, intellectual. <laughs> you can see any kinds of IPR. <laughs> License IPR, yeah, and you can see by CC by NC CC by whatever. <laughs> okay, and in our in our project, we focus on the、uh, the sharing and the business model of A Daddy.、Uh, for example, if someone called Mr. Otani, upload the photo from from his smartphone. And with, as long as he make the right tagging and as and and this photo assigned to the expert and the expert do the revisement, after this process, progress the、oh, Mr. Otani can get the score, and he can use the, this score to exchange and the photos from another、uh, another member in our alliance. And if 
also that is the total uh, service of a daddy and if o mr otani cannot can uh, can cannot get cannot up okay if mr otani don't have any kind of image he or she can pay for <laughs> other members to buy the photos okay and because this uh, we want to use a daddy platform to 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 fasten up the digital transformation in agriculture and so the next step will be the data driven digital transformations we found out a lot of farmers they want to involve in uh, they, they want to use digital tools but they don't understand any kinds of uh, uh, like Python or C core language, and all they have, all, all they can do is uh, surf on the internet, upload with some uh, GUI interface, and share their fo photos. So we de develop these digital tools to help the uh, we call Marco Magua, Chengshi Magua. They don't uh, they don't need to understand or to learn any kind of uh, language. But they c as long as they just, all they have to do just upload from their smartphone and the standardized uh, process and the collaboration process will be done through the ADADI platform. So we have four functions. One is pre-cleaning the data. The second is the data will be cross top with domain. Uh, the member will the member in our alien can cross talk with domain expert by collaboration. Oh sorry, it's a typo. Collaboration uh, pro progress, and with the tagging progress, the expert can um, can share their knowledge through the tagging, and then this knowledge can can help the AI develop teams to uh, to training the AI model for image recognition. And to, and also because it's fr if, if you if you don't have money, you can still upload your data to get another photos. So which means the platform can encourage people to ex ex exchange the image. And the the core value of our uh, platform is to want to build up an ecosystem for agri data. And uh, and the second part is uh, and the other value of this AI platform is we want to lead the AI, and because we train the AI by the domain knowledge from the tagging process, and after we training the data, we can learn more from the AI model. Okay, so uh, thanks for your listening. So if you have if you <laughs> are playing Pokemon Go, you can add me, <laughs> add me friends. <laughs> okay, we can exchange gifts. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for our time. I think we have one minute left, so we open one question. Do anyone have questions? Okay, I think, oh, oh please.就是我們分兩個部分好了 猪病害或是动物的病害，因为我们这个照片是从兽医师来的，所以兽医师就很严谨，他拍照的时候就是都会讲，你看都会依照那个那个标准的拍照模式，所以影像辨识的部分也会比较容易。那植物的话，它有时
呃一张就一一个叶子或是远景近景的问题。对，所以其实某种某种程度来说，在资料收集的部分，我们会用联盟制，也是这样，让联盟的盟主去决定说，一个照片你应该标准的照片是长什么样子，然后必须有什么样的标注。那其实盟主很重要，是他他可以去决定很多事情，所以我们就是希望某一个大带小，一个盟主带很多个成员，然后由盟主去决定那个照片应该是长什么样子，然后这样 AI 后面的 AI 团队在做影像辨识的训练的时候，他就。比较可以做得出那个 AI 是真的可以辨识得出东西的,的成果。那目前的成果，我们现在就是或因为这是一年期的计划，我们大概就是三个领域：猪、牛、番茄。然后我们总共现在是大概五十个成员，然后三个盟主这样。那大部分都是老师或是研究机构的人。对，那嗯，对啊。如果说像刚刚有其他的那个 Cost Cup 的。的人也觉得想要想要加入的话，就是基本上联络人是我，然后我们会开一个专门给 Cost Cup 的的联盟这样子，嗯，对对对，大家可以去试用，但但希望大家都是妥善的试用啊，不要传一些奇奇怪怪的照片，对。对。哦、oh, ，对啊，就我们这边就是会有三个角色，所以盟主盟主就很重要，因为那个盟主他要去决定说哪些人是专家，然后盟主自己就就要去，其实我们就是有一个自同台审查的概念，就像论文同台审查。那如果我们我们平台的管理者，我们发现这个盟主都没有在管理，然后大家都乱传照片，然后就只是为了拿其他人照片的时候，我们其实平台就有这个权利去把这个盟主收回来，这样。很大量的工，对啊，就是，但是总比，因为其实没有这个平，没有这个工具的话，现在都是大家就是 Excel 写一写嘛，这样会很辛苦，对。o v e r t i m e 如果大家还有任何问题的话，可以再跟阿才联络。那感谢大家参与本场议程，让我们欢迎，就是等下还有一场议程，欢迎再继续等待下一场的到来。同一个 spec 嘛，都是一个很标准的照片。再来就是未来会把现在原本是专家，就是人工要去勾嘛。未来我们会装一个套件，是可以自己去辨识那个病症的外观。哦、可是像你们病辨识病症外观，有一个会不会遇到就是你没有办法去辨识它到底是病症还是花纹的问题啊？所以这又变成是说，当我今天我专家的目标很明确，是我要开发一个可以辨识病体影像的 model 的时候，我们的资照片收集就会是典型。哦、oh, ，就是它一定会出现那个状、那个病症的照片。对对对，就是跟医、oh. 跟跟医疗蛮像，但是因为植物它又更复杂，是呃，因为植物病症它可能它有时候是是一样的。对，它第一个它你知道只被虫咬还是被菌菌感染，还是说它是讲生理伤害，它只是它其实也没有生病，它只是肥料下的少嘛，它就是一个累累累重。所以所以我们其实这都只是工，对我来说啦，就它就是一个工。
因为我们要解决的问题就是、就是、就是那个病人，那不会有有一种医生是说就是没完没了，会啊，所以就是在我们在写这个计划的时候啊，我们就比较悬殊，我们比较投投机一点嘛，我们就说我们要分的是真菌系还是细菌系，因为对于番茄来说，真菌跟细菌的平衡是完全不能比的，它第一个它的那个上面真菌就很好，细菌就不好，或细菌的那个菌斑就是。叫我立立眼就可以。然后是一个呃，工程工呃，你有看过我之前？有有有有，是是 A T E 这个公司的。对对对，不过讲不用讲。对对对对对。这個、呃主要是做那个能源相关的 open source 题目。啊，能源啊，或者是绿绿色化工嘛？对对对，绿绿绿色化学。你说什么东西做 open source？ 不能做 open source。专利。对对，所以所以我会用元用元素，它有哪些元素堆叠起来的？对，像实验或者是模拟，就是在一些在比较基层的一些元素。对，那现在世界上也有把它推出来做 open license 的行政。呃，有一些国际组织有。在哪里看到？介绍好，我们这边。哦。但这个卡比贵了。因为绿能电厂最讨厌的题目。嗯，对啊，我也不是挑最 popular 的题目，是挑跟自己刚好刚好人生的经历有相关。喂，喂。OK， 因为我们隔壁一层在玩 BOF 了，所以我稍微关一下门。Okay, how? Uh, thank you for coming this session. And our speaker Liam is uh talking about the green technology in open source. So let's welcome him. Yeah, we are using. Okay. Uh, thank you all. I'm Liam. Uh, today I want to talk about fast implementation of sustainable technologies by open licensing of intellectual properties. Uh, regarding Open licensing, I, I think the most well-known uh, licensing way is Creative Commons by license and uh, BSD. Uh, this is to grant the users to, to the free use of the license work, including redistribution and uh, even modification. And in order to tackle the climate crisis, uh, we all want to speed up the implementation of the green technologies and even spread the knowledge to regions or communities which are less resourceful or economically less competitively. Um, 
but we we are of course on the other hand we highly appreciate the efforts of the researchers their achievements and their efforts and we are not encouraging freeloaders so uh, today i want to propose a model for research and uh, even business model to spread the results of res research while not discouraging innovation i you can consider research as a, a roof and there are six foundational pillars the first two pillars are literature review and uh, hypothesis formulation and uh, this these two are familiar to researchers who are who are writing the thesis but they are not specific to writing a thesis in the realm of pattern you have to also study the literature you have to review the literature you have to formulate the hypothesis in order to draft a pattern map or to know better about the prior arts and the middle two pillars uh, here one is modeling simulation and analysis the other one is experiments these two pillars are, are the main dish in today's discussion and uh, the other pillar optimization you can consider it as a iterative process among modeling simulation analysis and experiments and uh, optimization is very specific to specific to individual research because uh, you may borrow someone else's modeling simulation or experiment to build up your own research but optimization is very uh, specific to your own research that is that is what optimization is and interpretation and discussion is the way you present and uh, dis uh, the way you present your research results to the public so you can build your own research based on other simulation and experiments uh, avoiding duplicate efforts and reducing repetitive investments this is uh, uh, an experimental force data of a restrained ROV uh, which is remotely operated vehicle uh, this open data is released by uh, Edinburgh University in the website called data share and you can see from the photo there is an ROV attached to a frame via eight tethers and the frame is to simulate a boat if you want the ROV to freely explore the environment of course you don't want, want it to, to be to be restrained by a boat but sometimes you you need to you need it to perform a specific task and you need stable transmission of power and data that that is when uh, an ROV has to be restrained by a boat and the aim of this experiment is to quantify hydrodynamic forces acting on a restrained remotely operated vehicle under the following situations uh, one situation is uh, this water tank will produce regular and uh, irregular waves and the other situation is when the ROV's propellers were activated at different rotation speeds so that is the aim of the experiment and the application is for the underwater vehicle design and control uh, the experiment is to use the collected data set as benchmark to test the performance of the ROV validate numerical investigation and uh, you use this experimental force data you can also develop and refine algorithms for position control you know that in order to 
control the position and orientation of the uh, ROV, you can consider this force data as your foundation to build your own research. So if you are the, no matter you are, you are the publisher or you are the user, uh, what is the consideration of experiment open data? Uh, there are the following items uh, you, can, you should consider. There are data type, data structure, and metadata is the description of data. This includes additional information about the data itself, such as when and how it was collected, who collected it, the equipment or methods used, units of measure, etc. Metadata is crucial for interpreting the data correctly and ensuring its valid use. Uh, there are also file format, data quality, licensing and usage rights, and interoperability. Interoperability is the ability of the data to be used in different systems, platforms, and software. Uh, of course, in this case, there is a, a licensing agreement to it. Uh, it is the typical Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International Public License. And uh, the rights and conditions are very familiar to, to us. And in some of the cases, there will be optional restrictions, like a uh, licensor might choose to apply to the licensed material, such as the non-commercial and non-derivatives restrictions. But these two restrictions are not applied in this case. Okay. Uh, in, in order to proceed with my discussion, there are some engineering disciplines in my focus. Uh, there are green chemistry, green chemical process, material, environment engineering, and energy uh, system. And we can try to map them with SDG, SDGs. Um, let's take environmental engineering, for example. This field primarily supports SDGs related to environmental protection and sustainability. For instance, it contributes to SDG 6, clean water and sanitation, through developing water treatment system, and SDG 11, sustainable cities and communities through sustainable urban planning, and SDG 13, climate action by designing climate resilient infrastructure. And you can apply this uh, mapping methodologies to other disciplines. Each of these disciplines intersects with other SDGs as well, given the interconnected nature of sustain sustainable development. Also, many of the new innovative solutions to global challenges will require the integrated efforts of all these disciplines. Apart from the experiment, open data, uh, now we come to the point, modeling, simulation, and analysis. Um, first, let me uh, explain what, it, what modeling is. Modeling is the process of creating a mathematical representation of a system, such as a chemical reactor or an energy grid based on physical laws, experimental data, and logical assumptions. Uh, in the realm of green chemical engineering, models can be used to understand the behavior of complex systems and to predict their responses to various inputs. And what is simulation? Simulation, once a model is created, it can be used to simulate the system's behavior under various conditions. This involves numerically solving the model's equations to predict how the system will respond to different inputs over time. MATLAB is a widely used tool for such simulations, providing various built-in functions and toolboxes for these purposes. And modeling is indeed a process of transforming a real-world system into a mathematical representation. This model will typically contain 
variables and equations that capture the essential characteristics and behavior of the system, whether it be physical, chemical, biological, or something else. And once the model is established, it can indeed be viewed as a mathematical problem from the perspective of simulation. The simulation will use the numerical methods to solve the equations that describe the model producing a prediction of the system's behavior over time or under various conditions. However, it's important to remember that while the simulation is a mathematical exercise, the model it is based on is a simplification of the real world. The model's accuracy will depend on how well its assumptions and simplifications match the real system. So even though the simulation is based on mathematics, interpreting the results and relating them back to the real world requires understanding of the original system. And now I want to uh, introduce some very commonly seen computeri computerization tools for modeling, simulation, and analysis. Uh, first is MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB and its companion tool, Simulink, provides a rich, well-documented, and widely used platform for simulation and model-based design. They are known for their use, ease of use, visualization capabilities, and extensive library of pre-built blocks and toolboxes, which can make it easier to set up and run complex simulations and also interpret the results. And uh, another, another important tool is uh, Python. I, be I believe most of you have heard, heard of that, but what, what its role in simulation and modeling. MATLAB and Python, both powerful computational tools, have their own unique strengths, which make them individually suitable for various tasks in chemical engineering and energy research. However, it's their combination that can truly enhance the efficiency and the scope of these research areas. MATLAB has been the standard in the engineering and applied sciences communities for years due to its powerful toolboxes and simplified coding language. On the other hand, Python is a general, general purpose language that has been gaining popularity in scientific computing due to its readability, flexibility, and a vast array of scientific libraries available, such as NumPy, SciPy, and Pandas. Moreover, Python excels in data analysis and visualization with libraries like Matplotlib and Seaborn. Importantly, Python's strong capabilities in machine learning and AI with libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch provide a great advantage in predictive modeling and optimization tasks. So these two languages can work together in several ways. For instance, you can call MATLAB function from Python using the MATLAB engine API for Python, thereby accessing MATLAB's specialized toolboxes while retaining Python's advantages. Similarly, you can use MATLAB's Python command interface to call Python functions directly from MATLAB. So uh, in a typical workflow, one might use Python for data collection, pre-processing, and exploratory analysis due to its powerful libraries and ease of handling large data sets. Then they might switch to MATLAB for the modeling and simulation stage, utilizing its advanced toolboxes and Simulink. Finally, they, they might go back to Python for further analysis, visualization of results or machine learning tasks. And finally, there are two uh, computational tools I want to make examples of. Uh, there are Cantera and Pyomo. Uh, in recent years, there has, has been some, an increase in Python-based simulation tools for chemical engineering and energy research, such as Cantera and Pyomo. Cantera is particularly good at modeling for chemical engineering 
and thermodynamics. Pyomo is a powerful optimization tool. These tools offer functionalities similar to those found in MATLAB and can interact with other Python libraries, allowing for integrated workflows within Python. Um, besides modeling, simulation, and analysis, there are also uh, topics about data analysis and algorithm development. A data analysis refers to inspecting, cleaning, transforming, and modeling data with the goal of discovering useful information, drawing conclusions, and supporting decision making. It's a crucial step in interpreting the results of simulations or optimizing parameters in a model. MATLAB, with its extensive suite of statistical and analytical tools, is often used for this purpose. And algorithm development. Algorithms are step-by-step -step procedures for calculation. Algorithm development involves creating new methods or improving existing ones to perform a specific task more efficiently or effectively. In the context of green chemical engineering and energy, this might involve developing new algorithms for more accurate modeling of chemical reactions or for faster solutions to optimization problems. MATLAB is a preferred tool for many researchers for developing, testing, and implementing such algorithms. Uh, there is some more about the interrelationship between data analysis and algorithm development. First, you can consider the results of the data analysis are the inputs for algorithm development. For example, uh, studying the data from a chemical reaction might lead to the development of a new algorithm that more accurately predict reaction rates under different conditions. And after the algorithm is developed, you can gain more insight on the data. So this is also an iterative process between data analysis and algorithm development. And the goal of the algorithm is to to improve uh, the understanding of model and also for a faster solution to optimization. For example, interpret sensor data from a chemical process, identify patterns that correspond to inefficient operation or waste production, and suggest adjustments to improve efficiency. And finally, we come to optimization. Optim optimization, this process involves finding the best solution from all feasible solutions, where best is defined according to some criterion. This criterion could be, could be to minimize energy consumption or waste generation in a chemical process. For example, Pyomo is particularly used for such optimization problems providing a powerful and flexible platform to model and solve a wide range of optimization problems. So optimization is the iterative process between modeling and simulation. And, the, and when this iterative process is finished, and which means that we get the best performance against objective functions. For example, uh, when the efficiency is maximized or the waste being minimized. So Pyomo is a powerful optimization tool, but it is not a standalone solution for every step in the modeling, simulation, data analysis, and algorithm development processes. However, Pyomo not, is not typically used for tasks such as simulating physical systems or detailed data analysis. For instance, you, you would typically model a physical system using another tool such as Cantera for chemical reactions or MATLAB, Simulink for control systems. And then you could use Pyomo to solve optimization problems based on that model. 
Similarly, while Pyomo can help generate valuable data through the optimization process, detailed data analysis might require additional tools or libraries such as Pandas or Matplotlib in Python. In conclusion, while Pyomo is a valuable tool in the toolbox of an engineer, it is typically used in conjunction with other tools and libraries that are more suited to the specific tasks of modeling, simulation, data analysis, and algorithm development. So now I want to talk about the, a better code writing way for open licensing opportunities. Uh, first of all, uh, use Python as the main script language while calling MATLAB functions via, via the MATLAB engine API. It's better than you write your main script language in MATLAB and calling the Python libraries. And number two, um, you can use some uh, Python-based open source tool for system modeling, such as Cantera. Um, so, the, but below is the detailed methodologies of doing that. Modeling stage with Cantera. You will first define your model using Cantera within a Python environment. For example, you could define a chemical reaction mechanism or a combustion process, specify the reactants, products, and relevant conditions. And secondly, exporting to a compatible format. After you've defined your model, you can use Cantera's various output functions to export the model parameters to a format that can be understood by MATLAB. This could be as simple as writing the data to a CSV file or a more complex serialized format. And uh, simulation stage with MATLAB API. In MATLAB or a Python script calling MATLAB via the MATLAB engine API for Python, you can import the model parameters. Once you've imported these parameters into the MATLAB environment, you can use them within MATLAB's powerful suite of numerical simulation tools to simulate the behavior of the system. And number three, use MATLAB Engine API for calling functions from those distinguished toolboxes that other open source tools lack. These API calls on MATLAB libraries, which are proprietary and need a valid MATLAB license to access. And the code is still human readable, and the functions being used, as well as the logic of the script, can be understood. You can use good documentation kept in code to gain an understanding of what each function is doing and compare this to the functionality offered by other tools. The MATLAB functions may be utilizing features or characteristics not present in the replacement function, or they might be integrated in a way that makes swapping them out non-trivial. And number four is modularize your code. The reasons of doing that, uh, including first code maintain maintainability. The first advantage of modular programming is that it increases code maintainability. When you divide your code into modules, you can update or fix errors in one module without disturbing the others, making it, making it easier to manage and update. And there are also code reusability and reduced redundancy, collaboration, open licensing opportunities. And regarding um, my suggestion of the writing way, a better writing way of code, you, uh, first regarding Cantera module, this module could be responsible for defining and exporting chemical models. And you can plan Python preprocessing module. This module would handle reading and data from the Cantera output and preprocessing it for MATLAB. And you can plan MATLAB simulation module. This module would run the simulations based on the 
pre-processed data. The code in this module will need to be protected if you don't want to share your MATLAB scripts. And there is Pyomo optimization module. This module could define and solve optimization problems based on the simulation results. And there is analysis and post-processing module. This module could handle analysis of the simulation and optimization results, generating plots, computing statistics, etc. And number five is well maintain a good documentation in your code for future possible improvement and replacement. Um, due to the time limit, I probably cannot go through this one by one. There is example script. You can test your code with example script. And testing a test suite to ensure the validity of the code after uh, every time after modification. There are input val validation tests. Validate whether the script correctly handles invalid, out of range, or unexpected input values, such as head temperature, pressure, and concentration of reactants. Finally, you can use MATLAB File Exchange Platform under a BSD license to share, distribute, and review code if calling MATLAB functions is unavoidable. Okay, tiered pricing scheme for pattern utilizing open licensed work. Uh, tiered li pricing scheme proposed in an open license which grants a patent to free use of open license technologies in the beginning but request different level of financial feedback when different level of commercial profits have been realized. For example, up to 100,000 in revenue from the license technology, no fee, and from 100,000 to 1,000,000 in revenue, 5% of revenues. And beyond that, we, uh, the licensor might request 10% of the revenues. Okay, so uh, due to the time limit, I have to stop here. And maybe we can discuss after this uh, meeting or afterward. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, first of all, I, I don't have the broad uh, industrial or knowledge background for all industries. So, um, but I think I if one industry uh, is very stringent on the disclosure or dissemination of knowledge, it might has its own reasons. Uh, I think I to change the culture of that industry is very is very difficult, yeah. But I I can uh, I can advise you about some uh, repositories worldwide, which host the open data, open research data in the world, and uh, uh, so you can get access to more industri industry knowledge through through my sharing.
，因为因为从物理物理转到数学这个阶段，已经被 model 里先给做掉了，所以的确 optimization 是在处理数数学的问题。但是你处理数学问题处理的好，啊，不代表就真的是是对的。你你要你要有一个，比如说刚刚讲的 data analysis， 你能判断出说它它是不是跟真实物理模型的不相符。真实资料，我想的只能是实验，实验带来的资料。对，那呃，因为你做 optimization 是纯数学的人处理，处理方式。定一个所谓的 objective function， 比如说最大产量啊，或者是最小的、最小的排、最小的排费啊。如果跟如果跟实验发现有差距的话，你可能就要改模型。我用更广的角度来看嘛，因为因为像像水下的遥控载具，它是维修那个风电的，像风电的海底海底电缆，或者是安装跟维修维护都会用的 R&D。对，那我就觉得是因为爱丁堡大学它它处理资料的的手法很很很有条理，所以我喜欢用到它。就是预期这种遇到这个有很多的 case regular wave irregular wave， 然后然后这个 R O D 的这个有就是推推力有没有打开，就不同的 case。你说 R O D 这个例子吗？他们有 chemistry。我讲的应该是应该是 objective function， 就是目目标。Cantera， 嗯，呃、哦，它它就是用来模 model 这个化学或者是热力学的一些模型。Objective function 是事先要
自己定义的。你的目标是什么呢？化学、化化反应动力学也是，对，但是但是这种学科的是人是人为把它定出来的，那对他来讲就是一个一个物物理或者是化学模型。有有对，那你一次定太多的目标，就会就会很，就会你就不容易。决定说你的 optimization 什么时候是做到好这样子，因为它会有很多冲突的冲突的条件。但但数学处理好，就像我刚刚讲的，不代表你物理有处理好，除非你的 modeling 做的很接近真实，但很接近真实，因为又有一些成本或者是时间的问题，有时候你也做不到，你必须难免要做简化跟假设。是标注吗？呃，呃，呃，文字数学。OK OK。这确实是很复杂的东西。嗯。嗯。对。嗯。嗯。是是，就是定太多会会冲突了，会彼此会冲突，就很难找到最佳解。